I guess I'll, I'll leave that overnight and see what it looks like in the morning and you'll see what it looks like next week. All right, it's the next morning. <sighs> Good coffee. Let's take a look at this guitar. First step is to remove these clamps. Uh oh. Oh, it slid a little bit. So you see this part of the horn's up higher than this part of the horn. That's too bad. This looks centered though. It's not perfect, but I do think it adds something to the guitar. I think it looks nice. I think once the tuning pegs are in there, it's gonna look even better. I mean, I'm kind of stuck with it. No pun intended. Anyway, hi, welcome to Gifted Guitars. Today we are continuing our work on this succulent themed guitar for my brother-in-law, Eric. It's coming along nicely. We've got a couple blemishes, which I have been told he will enjoy. He will enjoy the blemishes. They'll be his favorite part, I was told by my sister. I don't know how true that is, but I'm gonna keep moving forward with this. Even with its quirks, this is turning into a really nice guitar. I'm really happy with all the fret work that I did on it. It feels really good. The neck feels great. So um, I'm hoping that this turns into a very nice guitar by the end of today. As you can see, there's a bunch of stuff missing in the guitar. All the electronics are missing in this guitar and that is the main thing we're gonna be putting into the guitar today. That and hardware and strings and tune it up and play it and it's an exciting day. I hope you're ready for it. Let's let's get right into it. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is clean the guitar off one last time, get any of the uh, polishing compound that has gotten into any of the cracks and crevices of the guitar, get all that out of there, and then I can start putting the electronics in. There is a lot of polishing compound in here. So I'm just gonna really carefully see if I can scrape it out without scratching the guitar. Then I'm gonna use the airbrush without any paint in it. to gently blow it all away. Sometimes with these guitar builds, I like to throw in extra little things with the guitar, thing, like accessories, picks, straps, guitar cases, things like that. A long time ago, I used to work at a retail magic and juggling store, and it was online. It was basically a shipping warehouse, but we made silly videos and stuff like that there, and one of my co-workers' name is Avalon, and he actually started a new YouTube channel called 99 Echo, and on that channel, he makes knives. Now, I'm not gonna put a knife in Eric's guitar case. That's not what this is about. Avalon did make a chef's knife for my son Jacob, and in the package he included some of this material, and he said that people make picks out of this. From what my understanding is, this is layers of fabric that have been like dipped, I don't know if this is actually what this is, this, this is what my guess is, and then dipped in resin and stacked on top of each other, pressed and cured, and it ends up having this cool look to it. I don't know, I thought it kind of looked like a desert style blanket of some sort, and that just reminds me of Eric's guitar. So what I'm going to do is attempt to make a very cool pick out of this material. I'm not sure if it'll work. This is an experiment, but that's what I'm all about here on this channel, experimenting, trying new things, and making picks out of material that I know nothing about.
This definitely wins the award for most colorful sawdust. All right, now personally, this is my favorite kind of pick to use. It's called a gravity pick. It is a way thicker than your average pick, and I like that about it. I don't know what kind of pick Eric likes, but I'm scared to go too much thinner with this type of material. It has a little bit of flex to it. I, I just don't know how strong this stuff is. It's probably super strong. I just don't know. So I'm gonna go for this thickness here. Clearly I've got a long ways to go, but I wanna get the basic shape of the pick cut out first. And I think for strength, I wanna go this direction with the design. Now that I have the rough shape of the pick cut out, what I'm gonna do is try and file it down, shape it down, sand it down, whatever I can actually do to this thing to get it so that it's the right thickness. Because right now this is, this is a poker chip. It is too thick for what I'm going to do here. Some people might like a pick this thick, but for me, and, and I hope Eric, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make it a little, a little less wide. together nicely still kind of thick but I'm gonna do the rest of the sanding and shaping of this by hand without any electric tools unless I get frustrated and then I'll, I'll probably switch back to the electric tools but I'm gonna try for a little bit just doing it all by hand and seeing how far I get uh, right now it's flat edges just flat and I want to have kind of a like a knife blade sort of going around the entire outside of this pick and I also want to polish it up really nice so that uh, you can see all the design of the, the fabric that's interwoven into here. So time to do some very tiny sanding. So this little guy, I think turned out pretty cool. It took about the same amount of work as any other element on the guitar. Like this little thing took about as much work as burning the engraving into the guitar. The, it's like the same amount of time was put into this. So uh, hopefully Eric likes it. It turned out really pretty. The fact that it's homemade, I think Eric will really enjoy. I might make another one of these if I have time. I do have plans on giving this guitar to Eric, and so I have to have everything done before that meeting happens. So, because he doesn't know about it. I'm, su I'm surprising him with this guitar and this pick now. So we'll see if I have time. If I have time, I'll make another one and, uh, and give it to him. But I think this turned out really cool. So I've been texting back and forth with my buddy Avalon who sent me this stuff. And I learned a little bit more about it. So I wanted to share that information with you in case you were ever thinking of making something out of this sort of material. It's actually called G Carta, which is a version of my Carta and it is made with resin and I believe cotton sheets that are stacked on top of each other. It's a really cool material, uh, very different from anything else that I've really played with before. All right, we are finally at the point of working on the electronics for this. I have never wired one of these up before. I have wired up something very similar to it though. Uh, the guitar that I made for my sister Rachel is an SG, which 
this Les Paul style or LP style guitar uh, inspired the SG. Anyway, let's see if we can figure out the electronics on this thing. Okay, we got two pickups and from what I can see here, they are not labeled. But this one has a longer wire on it. Makes me think that this is probably for the neck of the guitar because the wire has to go further to get to the controls than this one, which would be the bridge pickup. The pickup with the red lead and the taller mounting ring is for the bridge. I was right. So let's feed this one in first so that the wires can go under here, through here, and go this direction, and through here. looking more like a guitar. I will say that having this manual is very cool. This is the Stumac LP style guitar kit instruction manual. I did not have this for any of my other guitar builds. So getting this from this company is extremely helpful. Look at all these colored pictures that you get in the manual. That's pretty cool. And I haven't gotten this with any of my other ones. It's saying that they have not pre-drilled the holes for the pickups. And the reason for that is they suggest putting in the strings and making sure the pickups are perfectly aligned before I drill the holes for the pickups. That seems like it makes sense, but that means I've got to put these pieces in right now. So I'm chamfering these holes just a little bit so that when I put these in, because they're sort of a pressure fit, it won't chip the finish on the guitar at all. I've installed these bushings before on other guitars and it is very difficult to get the hole to be the exact right size so that when you put the bushing in, uh, it's tight enough that the bushing doesn't just fall out, but it is also not so tight that it takes a lot of force to put the bushing in and you end up with all sorts of problems. I sensed that these ones were gonna be tight so I used a round file and tried to sort of expand the wall just a little bit on those holes before I put the bushings in. On the one closest to the camera in that last shot, it was not enough. So it was really, really tight getting that one in. The second one went in very nicely, very nicely. So hopefully I have two more to go. Uh, these ones are the actual like anchor to the strings. Hopefully uh, I can get these next two holes to be just right before I start doing any hammering at all. And, um, yeah, it's just sort of a little like touch and go feeling with this whole thing. So I'm also going to take this little grounding wire and run it through a hole in here. Let me flip you around here so you can see. Inside this hole right here, there's a little piece of wire that is poking through and then kind of pushed down. And that's gonna come in contact with this piece of metal and ground all of the metal pieces of the guitar that are not part of the regular electronics. Now I only need two strings to check the alignment here. So one of the strings is gonna be here and one right here. 
and these don't have their mounting holes yet. So I've got to set that right now. I'm going to push this down here to line these up so that they're straight. All right, so the reason we did all that is to see how these strings line up. As you can see, there's a little bit of wiggle room here and over here. And what we want to have happen is to get this screw and this screw to line up with the string, the two strings, and this screw and this screw to line up with the two strings. And I think that is where it's the best. Over here would be too far that way. So I really want them pushed as far this direction as I can get them. And now I'm going to mark the holes. Alright, we've reached the point where I think all my soldering is done, but I gotta test it out before I screw it all back together because I don't want to get to the point where I think I'm totally done and everything's put together and realize that I have made some wiring issue. So we're gonna plug in the jack into an amp. As you can see, everything's loose and just dangling out of the guitar here. I have the switch over here and the amp right here, we'll put this like this. Let's turn it on. It's a good, good sign. Sounds pretty good. Okay, let's see which pickup is going here. So that is going to be the down position of this switch. So I'm gonna mark that with a Sharpie so that when I put it all back together, I know which is which B for bridge. And then if I switch it, perfect. First try. First try. I can't tell you how good that feels. Oh, I forgot to test the uh, the volume and the tone. Let's make sure that's all correct. All right, so these two should be volume. These two should be tone. These two together should control this pickup and these two together should control this pickup. Let's see if I wired it right for that. We're gonna start with the bridge, which is this pickup here. It's a little... A little crunchy. I might have to clean up this, this potentiometer before I put it all back together. Let's hear the tone. Okay, okay. Okay, that's good. Let's switch pickups. Now we're doing the neck pickup here. All right, that all seems, seems to check out. Excellent, I can put the guitar together now. Like I said before, I'm gonna clean out the electronics in this, I'm gonna use this QD electronic cleaner and Let's see, I just taped these in so they wouldn't move around while I was flipping the guitar over. We'll start with this guy here.
So we already put two tuners on this so that we could put those two strings on and make sure that everything was lined up. Now it's time to put the other four tuners on and, uh, and get some strings on this thing. I thought it was done engraving, but then I had this wild idea for the cover plate for the truss rod. On a lot of this style of guitar, they write something on there, like I have one there that says tribute, one that says classic, and a lot of my guitars, people ask me to sign them before I give them to them, and so I'm gonna sign it on here with an engraving. That's my plan. All right, the guitar looks done. It is not done, but it looks done. It's got strings on it and, uh, and the pick guard. Eric told me once that the pick guard was his favorite part of the Les Paul, or one of the features that he likes a lot about the Les Paul. It's just, it's classy. You got a classy pick guard on there. The next step is very tedious, but very important, and that is setting up the guitar. The guitar, all the components are there, all the pieces are on the guitar. Now, we need to adjust everything and make sure that all the notes are playing correctly, all the strings can play without buzzing, all the height of every string is correct, all that meticulous stuff, we've got to get in there and, and make it happen. And, uh, and then we finally get to play it. The first thing I'm noticing on here is that this pickup is basically touching the strings. So when I try and play a string, it touches the pickup. A uh, couple of things can uh, can fix that. One is to raise up the bridge of the guitar here. Another is to lower the pickup. I'm gonna try and lower the pickup first, then get the strings to the height that I want them to be, and then bring the pickup back up. So, hopefully this pickup can be lowered from where it's at. And this screw here and this screw here will actually move the pickup up and down in the guitar, okay. Okay, the pickup's no longer touching the strings. I gotta check the bow on the neck. You want a little bit of a bow. A little bit of a bow like this. You don't want it bowed this way. If it's bowed this way, you've gotta make some major adjustments. But a little bit of a bow is a good thing. 
and it does appear that there is a little bit of a bow and I can tell because when I put this slotted straight edge in, uh, I can see light through the middle areas here. Like there's a little tiny gap here and none on the ends. So I know that the neck is bowing this way just a little bit and that's exactly what I want. All right, this is gonna be a little hard to see on camera, but what I'm trying to do now is make sure that these slots are deep enough for the strings to go in so that they're at a good height above the fretboard. So uh, I'm gonna use this little feeler gauge and I already tested these strings out. These three seem all right to me, but these ones, if I press down here and I slip this under, there's a big gap between the feeler gauge and the string, which means the string needs to get a little lower. So what I'm gonna do is pull this out of here and I'm gonna file into this little section of the string. Still quite a ways to go there. We're all done on that end of the guitar with the nut for now. Here is the 12th fret, which is the very middle of the strings. And we're gonna use this location to decide if everything's adjusted on that side of the guitar. I'm gonna use this little gauge here. I'm gonna put it here and figure out where the strings land on this chart. We want the low E string to hit right here and the high E string to hit right here. So I'm gonna turn it so I can see it. The low E string seems perfect. Let's check the high E string. It seems perfect as well. So looks like our bridge is at the right height. If our bridge was at the wrong height, I'd use these little thumb wheels here or a flathead screwdriver and I could turn this post and it would raise or lower this part of the guitar, thereby raising or lowering this end of the strings. But it looks like it's right where it should be. And I'm also going to probably make minor adjustments as I play the guitar. But for right now, I'm just going off of the numbers and the measurements. And this looks like it's at the right spot. The next thing we need to do is tune up all these strings. All right. Here it is, the final guitar. Um, feels feels good. Feels really good. Feels like um, a Les Paul. It's a it's a sturdy guitar. I love the shine on it. Let's see. Uh... <laughs> Let's see how it handles some effects. That was fun. All right, it's a fun guitar. It's very fun.
Yeah, I really like this guitar. I think Eric's gonna like it too. It's it's really fun to play. Um, it's kind of heavy, but it's a Les Paul. Les Pauls are just, the, they're a solid chunk of wood. That's what makes them what they are. I feel like the action is really good on it. Eric has a couple of guitars already. He has a PRS, which has a, a pretty thin neck. Uh, I think this one's a little thicker. He also has a classical guitar, and that thing has a real chunky neck. So. Uh, this is somewhere in between. It's not super thick, but it, I don't know. It feels nice. The frets on this feel fantastic. I put a strap on for safety reasons, just in case. Okay, so this is a very fun guitar. Uh, you can play jazz on it really nicely. You can play rock on it really nicely. You can play blues on it really nicely. It can handle, I think, pretty much every major genre. You can play country on it. It's a guitar. It's an electric guitar. I, I just, I'm having a hard time just talking about it without noodling around on it. Like, I wanna play it. Uh, it's, it's a fun guitar in that way. It has, it has really good sound to it. I don't know, I, I'm excited about this one. I'm excited to give this to Eric. Which is gonna happen next week. Next week, tune in to see me give this guitar to Eric. We'll see his reaction, see how he likes it. Maybe hear him play it a little bit because Eric can actually play guitar. It's rare that I give a guitar to somebody that can actually play it. I'm gonna try and make a nice mix of people in the future that can play guitar. Um, and, and people that maybe don't realize that they love playing guitar yet, but the guitar inspires them. And my biggest hope with this guitar is that it will be inspiring for Eric. Eric will want to pick it up, want to play it, um, hang it up somewhere, you know, like, I want it to be one of those inspirational guitars. And, um, and it's got that feel to me, at least. I, I want to, I want to play it. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for watching today. Thanks for watching the whole build process of this guitar. I hope that you've enjoyed it so far, and I hope that you tune in next week to see me give this guitar to Eric. If you're not subscribed yet, it really helps out the channel for you to subscribe. It's a, a way for you to support what I'm doing without any cost to you. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like the video if you liked it, and tell me in the comment section down below what you think Eric's reaction is gonna be, what words, would he say, what emotions will he uh, portray, if any at all? Let, let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you next week.